When it comes to buying an espresso machine, you can essentially spend as little or as much as you'd like. And some will even argue that a $500 machine does the exact same thing as a $5,000 machine. And to a point, that's true. In the simplest of terms, both apply pressurized water to ground coffee, resulting in espresso. But the same argument can be made about most things. Like when it comes to cars, a Honda and a Porsche can both take you from point A to point B. But I'm sure you'd likely agree, there's a little more to the story than just that one single aspect. So in today's video, I'm going to be comparing the Gaja Classic Pro, which is a $500 machine, to the La Marzocco Linea Mini, which is a $5,000 machine, and take a closer look at their differences and similarities beyond the price tag, as well as a blind taste comparison of shots pulled on each machine. But first, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Standart Magazine. Nothing goes together quite like a cup of coffee and some quality reading. And Standart Magazine fits into that pocket of happiness perfectly. Each issue is like a snapshot of coffee culture at that moment in time, with topics ranging from those on the forefront to those on the margins, not to mention some eye-catching design and photography. An included sample of coffee from some of the best roasters in the world helps bring the whole experience from your fingertips to your taste buds. So hit the Standart link in the description or head to standartmag.com slash Prometheus to support an independent coffee magazine, the channel, and treat yourself to a year subscription of Coffee and Coffee delivered to your doorstep nearly anywhere in the world. On paper, they don't come across as massively different, and neither machine is a treasure trove of exciting or impressive features. I mean, once you start listing a cup warmer that's literally just radiant heat coming off the machine, or an LED that sits by the group, you've pretty much ran out of ideas. But for the price, the main difference between the two is the dual boilers on the Mini that let you steam and pull shots at the same time, and its factory installed PID to ensure temperature stability. But I think where the Gaja really comes alive is its broad and approachable aftermarket options. For a pretty reasonable price, you can change pressures, add pre-infusion and temperature control, among a wide variety of baskets, screens, and other accessories. On the other hand, modifying functions on the Mini in a similar way will cost you significantly more, and the installations are much more advanced. So I think this comparison and the large price difference doesn't really come down to individual features themselves, and more so onto that somewhat nebulous word, quality. Even with the wide gap in pricing, both the Gaja and the Mini fall into the same category known as prosumer, which essentially means it's a consumer or customer facing product with professional capabilities and parts. But as you likely can guess, there's a wide variety of machines in the prosumer category. And just by looking at each of these, you can definitely tell there's some material differences. Outside of each machine having mostly metal bodies, the most obvious difference you'll notice right away is their size, which is underscored by their weight. The Gaja clocks in at 20 pounds, while the Mini tops just over 70. This leads us to talking about why there is that difference and what's inside each machine. Of course, looking inside both machines, you'll see tubes, valves, and fittings, but the Mini has a lot more metal, brass, and insulation. Also, the Mini has two stainless boilers, one for steam and one for brewing. The Gaja, on the other hand, has a single aluminum boiler. The Gaggia uses a vibration pump, which is less expensive and less consistent in terms of applied pressure, compared to the rotary vane pump inside of the Mini. The fact is, I could sit here and go through the entire spec sheet of each machine and just tell you all these little marketing points they put in there, but none of these things really tell you if or why one makes better espresso than the other, which kind of leads me to the next chapter. So now that we've covered the material quality, the features, and many of the differing aspects between these two machines, it's time to get into what you're really interested in, the main event, the espresso. Out of the box, the Gaggia runs a lot of pressure, around 15 bars, which is more than double what I'm running on my Mini, which is currently set to six. But this extra pressure isn't necessarily holding it back from performing. When tested, I was able to get 20 plus percent extractions from the Gaggia, but the difference in taste was notable. Using the same coffee and the same recipe, the Gaja produced shots that tasted quite a bit harsher in terms of a lack of sweetness and overall balance, 
while the mini shots were much more palatable, with a balance between sweet and bitter that presented a much smoother shot. So in an effort to really try and figure out those taste differences, I decided to level the playing field a bit. To do this, I swapped out the standard shower screen with the same IMS nano-coated version I used on the Mini. Then I swapped out the standard basket with a VST, and I also installed the 6.5 bar open pressure valve spring to bring it much closer to what the Mini is cranking out. Lastly, to keep out any possible bias, I also asked my friend Siri to come by and pull me shots on both machines while I waited in the other room. And after tasting both shots of espresso, one stood out over the other. Surprisingly, they actually tasted very similar, but the shot that I preferred had an edge. Not a massive one, but enough of an edge in terms of its upfront flavor to stand out. It was slightly sweeter and brighter. And that shot was brewed on the Gaja. Doing a comparison like this is difficult because it's hard to find a balance. I don't want to come across like I'm bashing the less expensive machine, all in favor of trying to justify the cost of the other one. That's the last thing I want to do. Every machine has its merits, its pros and its cons, its own je ne sais quoi. An unspoken thing that's hard to put your finger on, hard to explain. But for me, it's a feeling that I always described as barista tingles. And coming from a service and cafe work background, I've grown very accustomed to the heft of the tools and machinery on a commercial bar. And the Gage just feels really delicate by comparison. The term heirloom quality has been bouncing around a lot lately. And I think in the end, each machine's included tamper really illustrates their differences. The Mini's heavy etched and polished stainless steel versus the Gaja's slightly flimsy black plastic. The Mini is intended to be on the counter for a decade plus, while the Gaja comes across as somewhat disposable. That's not to say there aren't 10 year old Gaja classics floating around out there somewhere still pulling shots, but I don't think that's the lifespan that Gaja planned for based on its internals and its accessories. So in the end, the true differences between a $500 and $5,000 espresso machine lands on more than just budget and espresso quality. Much like coffee on its own, there's a lot of personal preferences in the mix. Aesthetics, performance, reliability, brand reputation, and so much more. And these factors are all for you to decide, not for anyone else to judge or to dictate. Personally, as someone who's owned a Mini for over five years now, I had a lot of fun with the Gaja. Opening it up and rooting around inside, it just felt a lot less intimidating. Now I'm sure some people out there are waiting for me to make a verdict, give a hard answer, give a winner and a loser, but I really don't think it's that cut and dry. So to come full circle all the way back to the intro, in the simplest of terms, both machines make good espresso. And if that's all you're looking for, why pay 5,000 when you can pay 500? But if you have the budget and you're looking for something that's more than just point A to point B, the mini or maybe something else even higher on the prosumer food chain may be more your speed. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. Do you have experience with both or either of these machines? Where do you land on this topic? And of course, if you had to choose one, which would you prefer and why? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below, and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.